five lights on, it's raining at Cota, and we go racing for what could be a pivotal contest in this year's Pro Championship. Ronha trying to defend from Barment, who's got the better launch. He's going to the inside. Ronha circumspect at this stage. The McLaren's going to take the lead. They're very close to banging wheels in the opening corner of the race. He's trying to keep his foot in. McLaren backs his house, and Barry Barment off the road there as they try to feel their way through the conditions. Ronha gets back the lead that he lost for all of a couple of metres. Oh, Burman just went too wide there and lost the traction. Benham is off in the background and the Mercedes driver drops to the back, but this is going to be so tough. They're all on full wets. Monsoon conditions at Cota, and this could be so easy to spin away your chance of major points today. Bit of an error for Kiefer there, and you can see immediately Oh, he struggled for a couple of corners now, the Red Bull driver. And Jano Otmir, much better rhythm behind on this lap. So easy to make that error, and it costs you all the way through the S's that begin this lap after the hairpin. And he's going to have a chance if he can. He's not going to shape into this one, but can he put any pressure on down the back straight? Barry Burrowman trying to heap it on. Will he use a little bit of battery to try and close the gap now? Mercedes trying to catch the Red Bull ahead. Good exit off the corner. And that battery being deployed, close, close, closer still. Can he shape the move? He's looking for a place on the podium once again. And the man who couldn't find any form earlier in the season finds his way by, gets a little tap. He won't mind it, though, because he's up to P3. Here you go to the pit lane for Ron Hart, Barman, Otmir. And who's going to go again? Who's going to go long? And Keith has been sent long, but surely that's to give preferential treatment to the championship contender for Red Bull, but Lucas Blakely, second McLaren on the road, has to take that extra lap round there. And so it's Boromont who's getting back into the race, and he's just behind the top three glued together as they leave. We've been waiting for this period of time. We've been waiting to get the intermediate tyres on. Don't worry about that rule about the white line. It doesn't apply. And now Barry Boromont, can he try and fight his way by that extra lap of pain on the wet tyre for Lucas Blakely? Could it cost him more points in his battle for the title? They're racing for position, and they've got to pick their way through. Where you catch the driver who's decided to stay out, that is a different situation entirely. You've got to be able to pick through. So here, are oh, you going to have to get off the throttle? This is where the race can be won and lost. No exaggeration here. Got to be brave, got to be bold, got to go around the outside. And you can see he still can't clear the wet weather driver. And Thomas Ronha is putting one hand on the trophy here because now Burramund is under pressure. Cars left, cars right. This could decide the race. And Jano Otmir, he's right there with Burramund now. Burramund's got a huge amount of time to make up. To the driver ahead, that is a gift for the man who is becoming, with every meter that we run in the race, a championship contender. Now all of those who had to do an extra lap are making their stops, and to the front of the field, bar one, goes Thomas Ronha, and he's got a healthy lead as well. Oh, man, the last of the late breakers. Oh, I thought he was just going to smash into the side of the McLaren there, but he's wiser than that. That's very tight in the background. Alvaro Caraton, Brendan Lee trying to take fourth and does so. Brendan Lee looking to return to the top step here. He's trying to fight his way through. He's dreaming of that podium. If someone's going to take a gamble and go for the victory, you might be looking at him. Brendan Lee up to fourth, a fighting drive, and his resurgent form continues here. This is going to be fascinating to see. They're all in for the dry tyres. This is incredible. They were watching Marcel Kiefer, and he took the pain, but then he's getting the gain of those medium tyres. They were setting faster so DRS is enabled as well. That's going to change things. Brendan Lee did go into the pits, and it could be all changed at the end. Out in front once again. Hold on. Yeah, he did manage to get out in front. So the Haas, the Longe's McLaren. carried on. Longe leads the race at the moment. Longe says, go on then, let's have a gamble at the end. <laughs> it's a Friday night flutter for Nicholas Longe. Look at this, with DRS, we're going to get a change for the lead. Barry Boroman in the final stages, going wheel to wheel with Thomas Ronha once again. And Boroman, he believes in this title battle. He believes it's his year, and Ronha's trying to come back. The
difference in compounds as we sweep our way through. McLaren versus Haas once again in the final stages. Just like it was in Monza, it's going to be the case at the Circuit of the Americas. Ron Ha won't give this one up as well. Otmir's in the mix. Brendan Lee is within one second of the Mercedes driver as he looks for the romantic finish to this most epic of weeks. Freddie Rasmussen's passed Lucas Blakely and may well end up finishing P5 at the end of this race with Caraton's penalty. As we see a replay here, as if by magic, a DRS move, easy as you like. And through he goes. That one is going to generate some chatter, I imagine. And it's Barry Boromant going over the line, and he's a few miles away from a second victory in the championship. But the man who denied him that accolade in Monza is going to try and do the same thing again. Ron Haar trying to move to his third win of the year. Barry Boroman looking for his second. And Jano Otmir hoping there's drama ahead. You can see Ron Haar is darting all over the road. We're on the 28th and final lap at the Circuit of the Americas in a thrilling race in all conditions. It now comes down to your exit out of this corner here. If you're Thomas Ron Haar, how much dare you dance to the edge? Apply all the battery power. You see he's draining it as we swoop past the camera. We're going to go through the hairpin. We're going to go down to the back straight. There's a penalty for Daniele Haddad, but here we go then. Is this the moment? Barry Barman draining the battery. Ron Hart draining it as well. They're coming into picture, now heading down to the 12th corner on the racetrack. Ron Hart trying to take it away. Tries the swap, tries the dummy. Bold, brilliant, wheel banging off the road for Barman. And Yano Otmir might take him here. This is extraordinary. Yano Otmir's got into the lead momentarily. He's off the road. It's gone wild. It's gone absolutely wild at the end. Yano Otmir takes the lead. The driver in P3 is off. And now it's Ron Hart. It's barely believable. Yano Otmir's going to do it. He's going to win two races back to back. Ron Hart got past and the man who started the final lap in the lead has dropped a fourth and you really did have to see it to believe it. The finest three races in F1 Esports history come to a close with Jano Otmir the winner for the second year in a row in Austin. Thomas Ronhar in second and returning to the podium Brendan Lee. Yes that really did just happen. I cannot believe my eyes. What just occurred on that last lap? It was absolute chaos. You best believe there's going to be some discussions in the stewards after this as well. But Jano Otmir taking the victory. The champion knew that things could kick off. He stayed close enough. And then they all went off the road. Brendan Lee at one point fancied a, a sniff at potentially getting a top two. Oh my goodness me.